Yeah, I love that. And anecdotally, I think everybody at that conference in March at least was talking about the fact that most of them had not been sick in a very long time, that they'd been following a ketogenic diet. It's like, wow, yeah, when was the last time I got a cold or a flu? Like, I, I always got them every year, and then I never did, and these people never did, and all those people never did, and it, it's following that lifestyle. Definitely anecdotally, you, you could say that uh, I think a lot of people in this world know that. Well, yeah, and that's what we're trying to um, that's what we're trying to learn more about is is at the cellular molecular level in terms of the communication between our immune system cells, uh, how it does provide that um, protection. Like we, most of the research that's going on in keto science now, and there's a lot, by the way. So this is not a fad. Uh, it's not, you know, there have been, because when you put diet in it, um, people start thinking about fad diets and calorie restricted short term. That's not what it is. The lifestyle change, it has fundamental, profound, beneficial changes to your overall metabolism. But what we're also trying to learn is, is the fundamental positive changes to your immune system. And as you say, every time I go to a conference, I say, you know, how many people have noticed since they've been keto adapted, they've had fewer colds and flus, like almost everybody puts up their hands. And, and so, yeah, sure, that's anecdotal, that's not science, but it's what we hear time and time again. I haven't, you know, sample size of one. Uh, I haven't had so much as a sniffle since the first Obama administration, so that goes back a while. Uh, uh, and, and I think uh, that's pretty, pretty typical. Now I'm also in good health otherwise. And, um, uh, but I think, you know, right now, most of the research is on chronic disease. So just again, for your listeners, acute diseases are things like, well, obviously injuries and trauma, but but infectious diseases, particularly, you know, viruses, bacteria, uh, fungus, and that sort of thing. Now, those are acute uh, diseases, and that hasn't been looked at very much. I'd love to do more work on that. We're looking at uh, the potential for therapeutic benefit uh, for chronic disease, and those are diseases that, that, that develop slowly over time and cause more persistent um, disease states like can cardiovascular disease, uh, cancer, uh, diabetes, uh, Alzheimer's, and other neurological conditions. And, and it turns out that um, for all of those, we're seeing really significant benefits. In fact, uh, uh, Dr. Eric Westman, who is also speaking with us um, in, in Salt Lake, uh, just had a paper come out this week about the potential benefits for people with really refractive uh, psychiatric conditions. Um, and, and I posted that, uh, you know, my Facebook and LinkedIn. I think on LinkedIn, you know, if you look me up, I'm Dr. David G. Harper on Facebook, I'm Dave Harper, but I post all the stuff that we're doing and the research that comes out. And I usually start that off with, you know, what the science says, dot, 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 because I, I'm, you know, I, you can view me as kind of a, 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 a filter for the crap that's out there because <laughs> there's lots of misinformation and in fact you know deliberate disinformation about diets there's a lot of vested interests that don't want to see people adopt ketogenic diets because they're basically devoid of processed foods and you know the processed food industry is a three trillion dollar a year industry and they're not very keen on on us telling people not to eat processed foods um so you know it's it's i think it's important that we have shows like your show that uh allow people like me to present the science to people so that they have that fundamental understanding uh of the benefits of a ketogenic diet and i should say uh as we're talking about that it's not for everyone uh there are some contraindications uh and those are listed in my book uh, i have the book here bio diet in the sec first part of the second half um you should talk about about this with your physician. It is a significant metabolic change. So you should talk about it with your physician. There may be a need for a concomitant reduction of uh, prescription medications, particularly antihypertensive or high blood pressure uh, drugs, uh, because the diet has a blood pressure lowering effect. Um, you may have, if you're diabetic and you're taking metformin or insulin, you'll probably need to reduce the amount of uh, insulin or metformin you're taking. Um, and all of this is very consistent, even with the the very ill women that we're working with in our cancer research studies, they see the same metabolic benefits as healthy people do uh, in that same short period of time within a few months. And um, so it isn't for everyone. Talk to your doctor. <laughs> Don't get your information off of YouTube. Uh, you know, people, because people will say, oh, I tried a ketogenic diet. It didn't work. And first of all, I don't know what they're eating. So I don't know if they're ketogenic or not. I don't know what they're measuring. I don't know where they started. Um, but usually what they do is they just start eating, you know, potatoes, bread, rice. They stop eating carbs. Uh, but they don't know how to actually supplement their diet with, with healthy fats and, and other foods so that they get a balanced diet. Um, and then they run into all kinds of problems with keto flu and, and, and cravings and that sort of thing. So that's part of the reason I, I bought the book, actually, sorry, read the book, 
I um, I should say wrote the book. Uh, I wrote it, uh, Casey, uh, in the back of my mind with your family physician in mind. So, <laughs> so they really don't get a lot of nutrition education, you know, in their defense. Your family physician is very interested in your health and improving your health, but they don't just don't get nutrition education. So they're not nutrition experts. So when you come to them and ask them about, you know, what about a ketogenic diet? You know, I'm overweight, I'm diabetic, I have some, you know, signs of hypertension or whatever. Um, you know, they're probably gonna kind of maybe roll their eyes. They might have heard of it, um, but you know, tell them about my book maybe because that will explain to them how it works and why it works. And in, in Canada, and I there's an equal movement in the states, but uh, there's a group of us called the Canadian Clinicians for Therapeutic Nutrition. I think you mentioned in the in the introduction. There are now about seven or eight thousand physicians, mostly physicians in Canada that are trying to advocate for a nutrition first drug-free approach to chronic disease before we start dealing with drugs and surgeries and so on. I mean, I, I've often said we don't really in Canada and the United States, even though we have difference in our healthcare systems, both of them aren't really uh, healthcare systems, they're disease management systems. We, we wait till it breaks down and then we manage the disease as it progresses to an inexorable shorter lifespan and a, you know, unhealthier, unhappy, unhappier life. So what we need is more preventative medicine. And, and I can't honestly say from a scientific perspective that a ketogenic diet will prevent cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes. I can't say that because we haven't done that experiment and we never will because you'd have to get tens of thousands of people. You'd have to lock them away and feed them two separate diets and then see the rate at which these diseases develop. And, and our, our study, for example, um, you know, it's almost a million dollars for 20 women in the experimental side for, for a six, six month, well, actually it's a three month intervention. So, you know, there's just not enough money on the planet to do that experiment. And that's some of the critics of ketogenic diets say, well, there, you know, we haven't done that experiment because they know we never will. So what we do is we look at its value as a therapeutic intervention for people that have those diseases. So what we see regularly, this when we talk about metabolic conditions, and there's you know a condition called metabolic disease, which is typically you know obesity, so waistline, um, you know high blood pressure, dyslipidemia, your lipids get out of whack, uh, and high blood sugar, and we see those correct themselves for seven out of eight people in a very consistent pattern um, time and time again. So, so it, it really is a good place to start for most people. But again, check with your physician first and make yeah. sure there aren't any contraindications dependent on your uh, present state of health to 